Hello Espresso Workouters and welcome to the No Wasting Time Workout Routine. This time XXL Super Roundel. So we're starting straight away in a wide stance, warming up in a wide squat. Feet are double hip distance apart and you're now squatting in between your legs. Still shifting the hips slightly backwards and down, but the intention is the hips go down. Now when you exhale, you crunch forward and you want to pull your navel in, rounding your back. Inhale, stand back up. Exhale is crunching, curling forward. Inhale is standing back up. Now be aware of your knees. Your knees go towards your big toes and the weight is on the outer edges and your big toe of your feet. Now for the head, make the head included in the movement and relax your shoulders as always. Very good. Now, next stretch is a side bend. We're starting with the feet hip distance apart and that will stay hip distance. Now, squat down. Start with the squat, pushing the hips back and down. Then stand back up, cross your foot behind and extend your inner arm overhead in long line. That is exhale squatting. Inhale, standing up, squatting down, not pushing the knees over the toes. So stay in a nice big angle to protect your knees. Breathing, you can either exhale squatting, inhale elongating, or inverse if that is very weird to you. If you want to include your head in the movement, look in to your heels. And that's it. Now we go for the rotation and hip flexor stretch in a deep lunge. So come back into standing, hip slightly closer together, then step back into a low lunge, big lunge, then keep the inner arm on the floor, open and rotate the outer arm all the way to the ceiling, and then come back parallel and stand back up. Again, change leg, Big step backwards, the knee stays behind the toes, big angle here, 90 degrees if you can. Then the inner arm stays down on the floor, big push, opening, rotating the spine. And if you want to, you can include the head. Now inhale, stepping backwards, exhale, rotating, inhale, parallel, and exhale, standing back up. Inhale, stepping backwards, Exhaling and here we go. Running on the spot, just 45 seconds. Every move is about 45 seconds, so there is not even a minute. Hello, here we go. Running on the spot, including your arms. You do want to rebound on the balls of your feet, so don't bring the heels down. Now lift the knees as high as you can. There's just 30 more seconds. The arms are very active, runner's arm going back and forwards. Your spine is as straight and stable as possible. There's a slight rotation in your spine happening. And now watch your breathing. You need the oxygen. So keep breathing and don't contract your shoulder girdle. Have your arms swing freely. Don't contract your uh, neck too much. It always happens to me. Neck and shoulders relaxed. Now three more seconds and you're all set. Yeah, that was it, great. You might have been warmed up by now, but we continue with the full body core workout and warm up, which is the workouts to plank. Here we go, 45 seconds. You start in standing, hip, feet hip distance apart, then bend forward either with a straight back or slightly curling and rolling down. Then once the two hands are on the floor, crawl forward, come into plank position, hands underneath the shoulders and then crawl backwards. When you crawl backwards, you can either push your hips up into an inverse V or down dog position, or you simply roll backwards and up and standing, arms overhead, breathing just continuously. And please make sure when you come into that plank position to not be curled up, bent, sluggish, and really be stable in that plank pose, hands underneath the shoulders. Yeah, here we go. This is our last warm-up exercise. We're going into warrior from standing. So come into a balanced pose on your right leg. Right leg balances, left leg is moving. You want to have a straight line from the tip of your toe of your left leg to 
the crown of your head, one straight line swinging forwards and backwards in a controlled way, like a seesaw. The arms can either be like an airplane, left and right, pulling the shoulder blades slightly together and sliding the shoulder blades down the ribcage towards the hips, if you want more of a challenge while you're seesawing back and forward in one straight line, you can bring the arms overhead, so hands are pointing upwards with the thumbs to the ceiling. Hey, let's try that again. Other leg, this time the left leg is on the floor and the right leg is moving. So change leg again. Contract your glutes, contract the back, contract your hamstrings. This is a great full body workout. So we're training balance and we're training the whole back line of our body. So swing back and forward in a controlled way like a seesaw. Keep breathing in a regular way. There's no real breathing pattern here because the movement is too quick. And then have the arms spanning out like an airplane or bring the arms overhead, an extension of your upper body. Thumbs are pointing towards the ceiling and fingers are stretching forwards. Yes, here we go. Legs, we're starting with a squat. You can be hip distance apart or slightly further apart. This is our starting position and here we go. First we're squatting down, bringing the arms overhead and then come back up into standing, lifting onto the balls of your feet. Hey, hey, so we're squatting down, pushing the hip back and down and then come back up into standing, lifting all the way onto the balls of your feet. So the breathing is Inhale down, exhale coming back up. Inhale squatting down, exhale coming back up. So you're exhaling while you're pushing against the floor coming back up. Make sure to include the arms in the movement all the while your shoulder girdle rests on your cage. Here we go. Nice little balance and glutes, hamstrings, everything quads exercise. We're starting in a standing position. Now bring your right leg front into a nice knee lift and then step backwards into a lunge. Double knee bend, 90, 90 degrees, upper body stands very straight. Shoulders stacked on top of the hips, stack on top of the back knee if you can, possible. Arms are very active, like runner's arm, just not as fast as in the running on the spot that we did in the warm up. And now keep your balance. You want to again inhale, come down, exhale, pushing up. Inhale, lunge down, exhale, pushing back up. Include the arms into the movement. This will allow you to rotate in your spine. And here we go, other side. We're balancing this time on the right foot and the left leg is moving. So start standing and bringing the left leg up, knee raise, and then stepping backwards into a lunge position. 90, 90 degree angle bend of your knees, trying to stack your shoulders on top of your hips, on top of your back knee, if possible. So you're staying really straight in the upper body. You're not bending forward and leaning or lying on your forward thigh. No, no. <laughs> the arms are very active. If possible, more or less 90 degrees, moving backs and forwards. So work your shoulders, work your back muscle. And if you work contralaterally and diagonally, your spine will rotate, and this is so good. Rotation in the spine is what we need. Absolutely, movement in the spine. Hey, hey. So next leg exercise, left and right, stepping outside into a side lunge. S start with your feet together, then step outside, foot is slightly turned outwards, and then come back into the middle again. The outer foot is always turned outside because we're doing a very big, side lunge position. So outer foot turned outside. Now if you want to include the arms, they will go like bow and arrow. The inside arm is straight, the outside arm is bent. 
Inside arm is straight, outside arm is bent. Very good. If you want to include the head, head is always looking to the stretched arm, so always into the middle. Quite easy. Keep breathing, you can exhale down, inhale up, exhale down, and inhale up. Whoopa, here we go. Last leg exercise. Again, a wide squat. This time we're doing three dips, so going down. Here we go, wide squat, two times your hip distance or a little bit more. Feet are turned outside, 45 degrees. And now sit in between your heels so the hips shift backwards and down. Upper body stays as straight as possible. Now we're pushing down three times. One, two, three, and come back up. One, two, three, bouncing down and coming back up. Bouncing one, two, and three, and inhaling, coming back up. Now exhale, 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 inhale, coming back up. Include the arms, bring the arms forward when squatting. Inhaling, arms pull back. Exhale, arms forward, inhaling, pull the backs up and open the chest again. Oh my God, we're at the core. We're starting heavily with a plank position. So bring your hands underneath your shoulders and your toes underneath the heels. Imagine your spine is parallel to the floor with your hips neither sacking like dropping, nor sticking out too much in the air. So your upper body is like a tabletop you could drink tea from. Your legs are really stable, really strong, like you're pushing them into the floor, giving you more stability. And now you're lifting, if you want to, one leg at a time, pointing the foot if you want to, and then putting it back down. The challenge here is not to shift the hips back and uh, left and right, or back and forward, or up and down, but to really stay stable from your core. Always check into your shoulders. Shoulders are away from your ears, long neck, and they stay firm on your rib cage. Now, if you need a break for your shoulder girdle, make sure to pause the video because we're going right back into a plank position, side plank this time. We're working the right side. So come onto your left elbow and the left outer edge of your left foot, if that is the thing. Then push your hips up, come into a side plank position. Plank means one line and lift yourself up from your shoulder girdle, so really pushing your elbow into your mat or floor, wherever you are. Then inhale, extend leg and arm, and then exhale, side crunch, really pulling this elbow and your knee together. Inhale, elongate and extend, and then exhale, pull everything together. You do want to continue pressing your elbow into the ground and pushing your hips up, even if it's 45 seconds. And you're done. Great. Other side. So now we're pushing our, we're working our left side and we're pushing our right side into the ground. So here we go. Right elbow in sphinx position, pointing to the, to, to the side. And the, le the left foot is on the floor, on the outer edge. Push your hips up. Firm line. Plank position means one line. And now bring your arms and extend and exhale, crunch. Inhale, elongate and extend and exhale, crunch. This is so beautiful. I know it's hard, but try to work it all the way through. So this is inhale, extend and exhale, crunch. Make sure that your neck is in a very comfortable position and feels good, pushing your elbow down and the shoulder away from your neck. Very good. So you didn't expect this, but hey, here's another plank, running mountain climbers. If you need a break, have a break, 30 seconds max. Now, shoulders are over your hands, step backwards into a plank and then bring the knees forward one after the other. You can either step, hop or run, whatever feels good to you. And you do want to have your hips as stable as possible. You see me bouncing up and down, that's totally fine, but my intention was to actually stay stable, though it doesn't look like this. Now your shoulders, again, like in every plank pose, your shoulders wanna be away from your ears, having a really, really long neck. If your neck is gone into your upper body, you're not in a good position. You don't wanna be a turtle. Uh, well, you wanna be a turtle with a very long neck. That's what you wanna do. Stick your head out and pull your shoulders away. Oh, finally, some rest. Thank you. Whew. 
you can go on your back, lie down into that box. So we're bringing our knees over the hips, 90 degrees bend, and then the arms extend backwards. Not, don't touch the floor, the floor is hot. Now, diagonally, left arm goes back, right leg extends, come back into center, and then change sides. Always the opposite leg to the opposite arm. This is a diagonal, otherwise it's gonna be very difficult. Then extend while keeping your upper body and your belly very firm. You wanna pull your navel in without pushing the lower back into the floor. Your lower back doesn't touch the floor. Just keep your belly in. Woohoo! Here we go, arms. And this is the best one, and this is only 30 seconds. Only 30 seconds of triceps push-ups. So come into your push-up position. Arms are underneath the shoulders or slightly behind, so closer to you. Middle fingers are pointing forward and are parallel. Now bend the elbows, scratch your torso, scratch your rib cage, and then push back up. You wanna inhale, come down, exhale, push up. Inhale, elbows are very tight, very narrow, and then exhale, push up. Keep, make sure that your shoulders are away from your ears and you're all set already. I'm not gonna tell you what we're expecting. Next, so come back onto your back, lying down, bringing your arms alongside your body. Legs are 90 degrees from your upper body and then push into your arms, pushing your hips up and lowering down controlled. Push into your arms. This is an arm exercise, not really a core one, though the core is working. So you do want to push the back side of your arms, including the shoulders, into the ground and resisting when you come back down. You really should feel this in your triceps, in your upper back, and a little bit in your hands, because the hands are pushing. The intention is to go upwards to the ceiling with the feet and not overhead in the plow pose that you might know from yoga. And then exhale, lower down. You wanna inhale, come and push up, and exhale, resist. Hey, very good. Here we go, another plank pose. I hope your shoulders and uh, wrists are okay. If not, have a pause and pause the video. So you wanna come into a reverse plank. Middle fingers are pointing to your feet and are parallel. And now first of all, push your chest up, push your hip up, get into a nice strong line. You want to focus your feet so head is slightly tilted forward. Then if you want to, bring one leg up at a time without sagging in your hips. So keep the hips pushing upwards. Imagine someone is pulling your toe to the ceiling. It's very easy. Just imagine someone's pulling your toe if you can. If this is too difficult, just lift the feet slightly off the floor, exhaling while you're lifting, inhaling while you're lowering, exhaling while you're lifting, inhaling while you're lowering, or just stay in your reverse plank. Woohoo! Didn't tell you this, but here are some push-ups with a twist, and this is the T-stand that we're adding after every push-up. So here we go. Make a nice open arm position. This time you do a triangular, um, position with your arms so that the hands are pointing inwards and the elbows are pointing out. Fingers in, elbows out, wide position with your chest. Then lower down in a push-up and then open up into a side plank, T-stand. Then exhale, lower down and inhale, open up. Exhale, lower down into your push-up and inhale, open up into that side plank. Look at my feet. So I'm on my balls, on the balls of my feet when I do my push-up. And then I pivot on the outside and inside of my feet. So I don't do anything weird stacking the feet on top of each other. I just pivot to the sides. Um, if you stay a little bit closer with the feet, it's more difficult. And you can stack the feet on top of each other. Ooh, ooh, hips and glutes, last one. Another balance exercise, this one's great. Um, so now we're working the whole back line. So right leg is working, left leg is in the air. Right leg on the floor, pivot forward into that warrior three pose or airplane pose. Keep your upper back in a nice straight line with your leg 
and then bend down, bending the knee and pushing back up. Bend down and pushing back up. You want to inhale, bending, exhale, pushing back up. Inhale, bending, exhaling, pushing back up. Usually when we need the most force and power, we exhale. Inhale, this is easy, exhale, we're pushing back up. Now the arms can either be to the sides in an airplane pose, or you bring the arms an elongation of your upper body overhead. Great! The other side, and we usually have like a chocolate side, a good side, that is a little bit better in balance and a little bit better tone-wise. So let's see, left leg's working, left leg's on the ground, right leg is in the air, and now we're bending our left leg. I can bend a lot lower on my left leg, for example, but I'm much better in balance on the right. It's so unfair. So come into warrior pose, arms are to the sides or forward. Make sure that you're having the same option as on the other side. So if you had the arms in airplane pose, do that. If you had them overhead, do that. Make sure you do your breathing, inhaling, lowering, exhale, pushing up. And always check into your hips. Your hips stay square, so your hip points stay parallel to the floor. Woohoo! Now we're having some glutes that are burning and we keep firing them up. So lay down onto your back, have your knees bent, feet are on the floor. Now your right leg pushes up, so the right leg is up in the air. You're pushing your hips up onto the ceiling. Now your arms are in that pull press up position from earlier, so you can still help with your arms pressing into the floor. Arms Back side of your arms, back side of your shoulders, pressing into the floor, head is relaxed. Now, if you want to go a little bit further, don't come all the way down, but stay slightly in the air. So you can increase the intensity by lowering down only a little bit and kind of bouncing up and down in the air like that. You're great, You're doing fantastic. Keep the whole foot on the ground, so not just the heel, whole foot stays on the ground. Change sides. Now the left leg is up in the air and the right leg is on the ground. The right leg, the, neck, the leg that's on the ground, is in a 90 degree position when the hips up, so that the angle is comfortable for you. Your feet, is kind of, your feet are kind of closed to your hip, close to your hips. Again, you can push with the arms into the floor and then push up exhaling, inhaling, lowering down. Again, we need most power pushing ourselves up, so we exhale, pushing up. Inhaling, lowering down. If you want to increase the intensity, don't lower all the way down, but just a little bit. You can bounce up and down, up there. It's so much fun. Great, two more seconds. One more in, push up and release. So this is a little bit of a nice one. We're doing leg circles with the right leg first. Leg comes up into a 90 degree position. The leg can be straight or slightly bent. Oh, I don't care. Really, it's about the hip mobility and um, creating some grease in that hip. That is so amazing. So we exhaling, starting the circle inwards, inhaling, continuing outwards, exhaling, circling inwards, inhaling circling outwards you can't really see it but it is really a circle so try to draw a circle with your big toe into the sky or ceiling big circle you can do bigger circles or smaller circles but have your hips stay on the ground so the whole rest of your body leg upper body head everything stays on the ground and try the other side left leg is working and again, we're starting with an inward rotation while exhaling, exhaling inwards, inhaling outwards. It's like the going down and coming back up, coming down, exhale, inhale, coming back up. You can point your foot if you want to, but I really don't care. Most important is that circular movement. This really is for your hip and creating some grease in there. So we have healthy and happy hips forever. Make sure you're making this circle and the rest of your body really stays firmly on the ground. 
I personally, I push really hard with my hands into the floor so that the rest of my body really stays firm and doesn't move. And kind of looks like that. Yay. Another hip hygiene uh, movement are these clamshells. They're really good for hip stability. So we're doing that. Really good for hip stability. So you want to lie on your left side, hips on the floor, knees 90 degrees bent. Keep everything stable except your upper leg opening like a book. You can pull both toes together or you just let go of that foot. Most important is that you do this rotational movement in the hips and nothing else moves. Not your hips, not your upper body. Very stable and just this hip is opening, the knee is opening to the side without anything else moving. You can exhale while opening, again, working against gravity and inhaling, lowering down. Exhaling against gravity, inhaling, lowering down. Hey, hey. Come on the other side. We continue straight away on the left side. Again, clamshells opening like a book. So you do want to bend your knees 90 degrees. You can keep your toes together if that's possible for you. And then simply open and rotate in the hip. Only the hip rotates up. And this brings the knee up and then close and exhale down. Exhale, come up, inhale, lower down. Exhale, come up, inhale, lower down. And this is really great for hip stability when you're running, when you're doing some kind of crazy stunts on skates, roller blades, skis, whatever crazy stuff you do in your free time. This is really important so that your hip can withstand any pressure, any run, any impact. Really good for your hips. Woo! Here we go. Thank you for joining me. Have a good day. Rest of the day, a great shower. If you want more workouts, subscribe and tap the bell to get notified. And see you soon at Espresso Workouts.